Francis, it's really good to be together, man. Yeah. It's, uh, I thank God for uh, bringing our paths across each other many years ago at Passion. And uh, it was right after Crazy Love had come out yes. and Radical. And I remember Heather read Crazy Love before I did, and she was like, did you did you copy Francis's garden? <laughs> I was so, I was like, no, I didn't. I didn't read it. But anyway, just kindred heart from the beginning, and uh, and then fast forward to right now. I think I would say for both of us, um, there's a lot of burdens on our heart and excitement, exhilaration, really, on our hearts for this time and place we're in. So let me just ask you, like what, when it comes to things that are burdens on your heart or things that you are really uh, exhilarated about uh, yeah. in this time and place, where does your mind go? Gosh, I think uh, burden goes to division in the church. And I was kind of following the pattern of the world or maybe we set the pattern mm -hmm. in our devices mm -hmm. and just uh, just a lot of fighting over things that aren't essential. We're not giving each other the benefit of the doubt. People are quick to leave churches and slander. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just, it's so hard when you see Christ's heart for the church mm -hmm. and his heart for oneness that the world hasn't seen. So that that burdens me. Another thing that burdens me, I think, is um, how attached people are to their phones and electric, you know, their devices. Mm -hmm. You know, First Peter four seven: the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self controlled and sober minded for the sake of your prayers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we have a generation growing up who. They've never known what it was like to not be attached and distracted by their electronic devices mm. to be able to pray and be sober minded. Like my mind is clear. I don't go to pray and then there's 30 thoughts that run into my head because I'm going such a fast pace. And, but if we really want to see something happen, there needs to be a depth in our prayer lives and our ability to connect with God. And so... It burdens me when I see like the busyness of people and unnecessary busyness, or um, just keeping up with all sorts of things. And but <clears throat> on the flip side, it could be that people are coming to the end of those things. I mean, mm. okay, are we so divided that it doesn't even make sense anymore? Everyone's fighting with everyone, um, and. And is there just like this sadness to this busyness to where people go, okay, there's got to be something more. And seems to be more of a pursuit of silence. Um, but what I'm most excited, I think, is I see a younger generation that's just going, it's almost like with the ugliness of the world and kind of the sad thought of, this country doesn't look like it's heading in the right direction. Uh, this world doesn't seem like it's heading in the right direction. Almost like a losing of that American dream mm -hmm. that maybe I had when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And going, okay, there's really no such thing. And so let me look to something else. And they're actually looking at scripture yes. and go, let me give my life up for this. Um, I feel like there are more young people ready to just go completely biblical mm -hmm. um, rather than like a little dance that we've been doing for for decades. I think about the one of the last times you and I were together, uh, hundreds of I mean, yeah. 18, 19, 20, 20 yeah. year olds and zealous for the word. Yes. Like yes. that morning you and I spoke, like, yeah. I mean, they're, they're just, it, it's not like they were sitting back like, Ew like on the edge of their seat, even standing on their seat, like yeah. open to Romans. They're like, in Romans. Like, they, yeah, 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 yeah. and yes. like praying for hours at a time, uh, or that morning. So we, we got there 
They were they were praying and worshiping for hours one night, and then the next morning they got up at like eight o'clock and mm-hmm. got together and prayed for the nations. Yeah, they're praying for all these different, na- and so I, and from a variety of different backgrounds. Yeah, I just think about exactly like putting those two things together. What you just said, there is a hunger for yeah. one, not the turf wars. Like yeah, it's just we we love Jesus, we love His Word. Yeah, and. Uh, and we've got a variety of differences, but, yeah. but these things the same. And we, uh, I know we were just having lunch with another brother, uh, Andy Bird, uh, who like, we all have differences yeah. in a variety of different ways, yeah. but there's a, a beautiful yes. depth of like family and unity that we were talking about that, uh, yeah, that, that is actually the depth is highlighted when we are honest about those differences, yes. but we cling to that, which yeah. like, we love Jesus, we love the word, and we want to get the gospel to the world, and we want to see spiritual awakening in our country. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I see, yeah, how, in a sense, what you've just said, these burdens, these struggles are actually kind of opening up doors to step in to, in deeper ways. Uh, a hunger for unity and a hunger for more than yeah what can be found on scrolling this device yeah 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 and uh that can be found here and in him well it's a fun season too right now i mean after the asbury uh, you know whatever you want to call it renewal revival it just seems like more and more people are seeking that experience of i don't want to leave this space mm. we are so focused on the person of God. Uh, and it's happening all around mm. the US. First time I've seen it, mm. going from city to city and seeing, wow, they really love the presence of God. Mm. And there are times when I felt like, like we're really joining the worship in heaven. And it's just all of us around the throne telling him how great he is. It's new. Yeah, and and yes, exhilarating. I think is the right word. Like we were texting back and forth yeah. in the last few weeks. Um, I'm laughing about a couple of those texts, but uh, anyway, they're less important to talk about now. But uh, as you and Andy were, oh yeah, with groups, and then we and our church family were yeah. experiencing similar things, and uh, and and really, and I you used the word experience. I just used it. Um, I mean, I've heard. Some people say like, well, it's not all about experience. Like, I don't know. Like I read Exodus 33 this morning and then I saw Moses go into the tent of meeting to be with God. And he spoke with him face to face. The man speaks with his friend. And I was like, that sounds like an experience to me that while I'm sitting there like reading it, thinking I've got this experience now, like yeah. I'm, I don't have to go to the tent. And yeah. then he says, now show me your glory. Yeah. And like that sounds like he wants more. Yes. And not of experience in and of itself. He wants more of God. He wants to know God more. He wants to see God more. He wants to see God's glory on display more. And not that he hasn't seen it, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's what happens. You want more, yes. right? Yes. He saw the burning bush and that it, it goes on. I mean, he's been on a mountaintop yes. and, and I, I mean, yes. with God, he walked up there and he's, I want more. I want yes. more. Come on, let me see yes. your face. Yes. Yes. But when I, <clears throat> passage I've been wrestling with, mm. 2 Corinthians 3, talking about that experience. Now, if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there is glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. And did indeed this case where once had glory has come to have no glory at all, glory at all, because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. I mean, it must far exceed us. 
the ministry of the Spirit. Yes, more glory. See, we can talk about Moses and go, gosh, what was it like on the mountain top? And he's saying the ministry of the Spirit, mm. you know, and and too many people are looking at our current, ex, you know, mm. life like, yeah, all we get is the Holy Spirit. Mm. They had, <laughs> you know, the glorious face was glowing. Mm. And so I'm wrestling going, there should be zero jealousy over that. And we should be experiencing something that far exceeds it in glory. Far exceed it. Yes. And not just for one person. I mean, this is just really celebrate. This is, yes. It's the spirit. It's the ministry. And we spirit with unveiled faith while holding the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Yeah. I, I, I do. I believe there is hunger among God's people for, for more and more of his glory. And I'm hungry for it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm hungry in a way. Yeah. Yeah. In a fresh way, I yeah. would say. Yeah. I feel like I'm experiencing him more mm-hmm. and I want to experience him more. I mean, it's, yes. it's the commands are supposed to lead us to life. Mm. You know, there's the life that's supposed to come from it. That's experience. Mm. Um, we should have this joy that's inexpressible. Yes. We should experience a yeah. joy yes. that is inexpressible, a peace that is beyond comprehension. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- these are all things that we we feel and mm-hmm. internalize and come from the depth of our being. Yes. The way we've been putting a lot in our church family recently, just praying continually for that which you said beyond comprehension yes. and expressible, that which can only be explained by the hand of God's spirit and only be attributed to his glory, like can't be explained any other way. Um, like that's when, when we read the story of the church in the New Testament, this is yeah. like only be explained by the hand of God and only be attributed to the glory of God. And we, we were talking earlier about, obviously that doesn't mean we uh, minimize the ordinary means of grace. Yeah. But that's yes. but that's part of the beauty. Ordinary means of grace. It's quiet time with God. Like it's opening the word and experiencing this and then getting together with yes. others and experiencing yes. this. This is, those are ordinary means of grace that are, I would say, yeah, truly extraordinary. Yeah. Like, I mean, the scriptures are extraordinary. Yes, yeah. Um, but I, I'm seeing the scriptures more and more. Like I said at lunch, like a treasure map. Mm. Like, okay, I read this. There's something available to me. I'm gonna turn off my phone, mm. get in the closet, get alone with the Lord, you know, and worship Him. Mm. Like it's, mm. it should lead us to something. Yes, yeah. You know, it's not to just sit and discuss it. That's important. But it's to lead you to action. Yeah. That's the whole book of James. Um, you don't just read it and go, okay, that's what it says. But you go out and you do it. Mm-hmm. It leads us to action, whether it's uh, you know, sharing the gospel, caring for the poor, mm-hmm. um, just confessing our sin. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's got to lead us to something. And some of it, you know, being filled with all the fullness of God. And, um, you know, we talked about our prayers that to him who's able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, mm. you know, I mean, it's in that same context of being filled with all the fullness of God that seems impossible that he says, no, let's pray the yes. laundry does beyond what yes. we can think, yes. the more and what we can imagine and go on. I want that. I mean, I certainly feel and can see in my life change, um, things that God's done, but to say that I've been filled with all the fullness of God, I got now there's a lot more and I want that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and to see him showing his glory in more and more ways, like uh, one of the things that comes to my mind when 
I think about what you were just saying is, um, as we've been just creating some more space to pray and respond to the word in confession, like people turning to their spouse in a worship gathering and confessing adultery or sexual morality, people turning to each other, confessing addiction, um, people saying, Hey, I'm struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts, just all kinds of, but instead of just going through the motions, like pausing to soak in what we read, respond to it with our hearts and authentically do that in life together. Yeah. Uh, that all sounds like n normal Christianity. Yes. Yes. But it feels like the temptation is so strong to go through the motions and miss what we're talking about as an, and see as normal Christianity. And I just don't, and I just want, I want, I want, I, I find myself uh, being drawn to deeper levels of confession mm -hmm. that are needed by God is in a way that Paul, like he just, the, the, and we know this, the closer you get to God, his holiness, the more you see your sin and the more you hate it. And that's, it's happening in my own life. It's happening in our church. I, uh, but that's what I want more of. I mean, that's, if I'm going to be filled with all his fullness. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, you know, lately I've been praying this prayer last few months and it's been so good for me. I just beg God, I go, Please, Lord, show me where I'm deceived. Mm, mm. Show me where I'm deceived. Because I can look back and, you know, see, you know, in the past things we've said or done in ministry, we're like, wow, that's embarrassing. Or I, you know, like it's revealed to you later. Yeah. But I'm going, Lord, there have to be things now. I don't want to find out later mm. that I was deceived. And it's so different from temptation. Because you and I know when we're tempted, but we don't know when we're deceived. And God's been showing me things just in faithfulness to answer that prayer where I'm like, gosh, this is so great. Just showing me weaknesses in my life and mm. leading me to repentance, which is a good thing. Yes. yes. And I was like, oh, we have to repent. Like, that's a joy. It's a, mm. it's a gift. It's a cleansing. It's ah, uh, let me walk away from that and just be cleansed mm -hmm. by you. Um, it's been a, it's been a great journey for me. I encourage everyone to do that mm -hmm. because we're all deceived in some way. Yes. None of the things are all brought out in a, but how many are humble enough mm -hmm. or has God just given you the grace to go, gosh, I should pray for that. Cause I haven't mm -hmm. thought to pray that until mm -hmm. a few months ago. I don't know. It just hit me like, of course, I don't know where I'm deceived mm. unless God Almighty just pours his grace on me and says, Francis, look at what you're doing here. Mm. Why do you do that? Yeah. Wow. Sin. Mm. I want it out. Yes. Yeah. Or it's a misunderstanding of your scripture. Mm. And, you know, times when I try to earn his love and work for mm. it. God, smart. Yeah, that's so unbiblical. But I've been doing it. Yeah. I, I don't know if you ever wrestle with that, but I... No, I definitely do. I, I was just about to say, like, one of the... I mean, oh, what comes to my mind is... Uh, this is the one whom I esteem, as I say six. Mm. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Mm -hmm. That's when I hear he's like... I, I I want to be humble and contrite in spirit, which and and tremble at your word. Like I I don't want to get your word wrong. I don't want to disobey your word. I want to obey your word completely. God help me to do that and to uh, to pray for humility and contrition of spirit. Yeah. But that's that's the text that comes to my mind when I hear you saying that. In and. To add to that, I noticed that I would tremble at his commands, but not at his promises. Mm -hmm. So even like what we read there in mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 3, it's a good thing, but we need to tremble at that. Good, good. This is possible. Yes. You know, and 
his promises is where I've struggled more in life. And then he was showing me like um, in Romans 5, 10, if while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. I was noticing, I was reading a book um, and he was talking about how some of us, we believe we're saved by grace through faith. Absolutely. But then when it comes to our day-to-day living, um, there's a sense in which oh, I had a good week and my mm-hmm. life and my discipline. I got up early, I prayed, so he loves me more. Um, or I really failed. Mm. Um, and so there's like his love towards mm. me has diminished. Mm. And he was going to Romans 5.10 saying, no, he loved you when you're enemies. So much more having been reconciled. What well, do you think now oh, that you're a Lord. son? Uh, he's like, you got to earn your mm. blood. And I'm like, oh, I totally do that. Mm. I totally do that. And how much of it is, you know, from upbringing or, and I had to apologize to my church. I go, you guys, you know, I'm never taught to be that way, mm. but it'll come out of my mouth because mm. it's what's in my heart. Mm. Mm-hmm. And out of that overflow in my heart, things are going to come out. And so some of you have some insecurities brought on by my teaching mm-hmm. because it's in me. And I'm asking God to change me of this. Um, but it was, you know, it was just confessing to the church and apologizing and asking for prayer because I want to be a hundred percent secure in his love, his great love for me much more now that I'm a son, you know, uh, he's saving me by his life. And to bring that full circle with what we were talking about earlier, when uh, Ephesians 3, 19, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God, that just flows directly from that you might know the height and breadth and width depth of God's love for you in Christ. Like what a picture. I think I was just in John 15, like abide in my love as the father has loved me. So I have loved you like, yeah, what a promise. I love you like the father loves me. Like the Trinitarian love of the father for the son is the same love he has for you yeah. and me. Yeah. So abide in my love. Yeah. One other promise that I tremble at, uh, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed as a testimony to all the nations and the end will come. And I know there's different interpretations of that, uh, but uh, it's what we were just talking about at lunch. Like I tremble Mm -hmm. when I think about one, just that reality, every nation being reached for the gospel. And two, I tremble all the more so, this is what we were talking about at lunch, that we have an opportunity like never before in history to spread the gospel to all the nations. Um, And I know some people might hear that and think, I mean, every generation has opportunities. Yes, without question. But with technology, like we actually over the, what Illuminations is doing with Bible translations, like we have the opportunity to see the Bible translated into all the languages of the world, potentially in our lifetime. Yeah. Like in coming 10 years like and we have more op- I Paul could have only dreamed he could never have imagined yeah all that we could do for the spread of the gospel yeah. from a device in our yeah. pockets yeah um so I know that's one of the things uh that we're both burdened and exhilarated about yes is let's let's go after the nations with the gospel let's mobilize everybody in the church uh from every age and particularly as we work with next generation, like let's steward the opportunities we have. When trembling, we have the opportunity yeah. to get this gospel to three billion people who've never heard it before. Yeah. So let's let's do it. So well, I think about that, words. Yeah. Yeah. With that passage right mm-hmm. before, because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the king will be proclaimed throughout the whole world. But I, I just see this connection of mm. so many people 
because of the increase of lawlessness, which we're clearly seeing in our world right now, um, they're almost ashamed of the gospel, ashamed of God's word, and their love is growing cold, but it's saying the ones who endure at the end will be saved. And I think it's all connected, and this gospel is going to go out through those people who are going to endure. And so I, I was going into this speaking engagement thinking, ah, people have so much, so many strikes against them here. Their minds are foggy because of this digital age. They can't pray. And the sin is so rampant. Mm. And it's at such an extreme that we think, well, if we're somewhere in the middle, we're okay. Mm. You know, and it's like, ah, oh, this is the generation they're growing up in, these poor people. And I almost, for a moment there, didn't have faith that, no, wait a second. There's no way God would say, there's no chance for you guys to be the most prayerful generation, mm. clear-minded. I could make you be the most self-controlled and go, no, I'm not going to watch every video on earth. Yeah. And I'm going to go after this. And just because sin is gr doesn't mean that the spirit is any less weak to make you the most pure generation that's going, I'm going after total holiness. Mm. I want to give my life to going to the nations. And it's like, oh, Lord, forgive me. I was starting to lose my faith in what he could do yeah. in this generation. If we really want to see what can only be explained by God's hand and only be attributed to his glory, what what better setup yeah. to that? Yep. Maybe so. Amen.